interpret my presentation in terms of policy uh, changes or policy impetus that we need on a project that we did for five years under the National Agricultural Innovation Project uh, funded by the World Bank and uh, led by a consortium of 10 institutions including CRIDA as the lead participant. Next please. This project was uh, set across the dryland uh, regions of uh, these uh, so-called backward districts of our uh, state. In fact, these eight backward districts of uh, AP were among the 150 backward districts categorized as backward by the planning commission in the beginning of uh, 10th five-year plan. Next, please. Uh, as I said, this is the project that we did, sustainable rural livelihoods through enhanced farming systems productivity and efficient support systems in the rain fed, in rain fed areas. So we tried to provide a support system which is knowledge driven and we, how we built it up, though uh, I would be speaking about the policy perspective, at the end of it, I would just very briefly take you through the modus operandi that we adopted in this project in order to uh, knowledge empower the community, farming community. Next please. I would only like to bring your attention to the third one where we extensively used ICT's third objective to build the capacity of the primary and secondary stakeholders through knowledge sharing, collective action by using ICT's. Next please. Well, uh, these eight backward districts were uh, having the problem of uh, frequent droughts, that was the common thing that bound all these, the, these districts, but nevertheless they had a very wide uh, variation in terms of the crops, soils, the farm, farmer behavior and uh, rainfall pattern uh, and so many uh, other things. As we know that each, each every farm uh, varies from one farm to other farm in terms of farmer's ability to manage the resources and even within the farm you might have different patches of soils, different depths of soils. And the interventions that we planned were very knowledge intensive in the sense that we tried to offer <coughs> uh, interventions which would enhance farmers' livelihoods on crop based livelihoods, natural resource management livelihoods, livestock based livelihoods, horticulture, value addition, market linkages. And all these things, the one encompassing uh, uh, intervention was capacity building in which ICT was used extensively. Next please. How did we do this? Uh, <clears throat> right from the beginning, probably this was the only project I would say out of the 36 uh, NAIP component 3 projects which dealt with the rural livelihoods, this is the only one project which right from the beginning had made special provisions to inculcate the ICT as one of its core strategies. So, so we, we made enough provision in the budget to provide for ICT equipment, even the building where ICT uh, equipment should be hosted and that building was not simply, uh, you know, meant to put a kiosk or a, you know, allow people to come. That was a one point shop, you know, it was rather we promoted it as a knowledge share center which also had space for farmers to come in, interact, store their produce, keep seeds and then keep uh, agricultural implements like custom hiring center we had set it up, set up in each, each of these villages. And we also thought that you know initially when we planned these buildings, these buildings were also supposed to have hosted the, the uh, ISRO's uh, connectivity that is the satellite based connectivity which unfortunately did not come through for the entire period of the project. Next please. And these are the locations, as I said, Adilabad, Anantapur, Kadapa, Khammam, Mahbubnagar, Nalgonda, Rangaredi and Warangal districts. And uh, in those mandals which you see in the, in the next column, and these were actually serving the village clusters in the, in the third column you see. And the anchoring partners, we had a very unique uh, uh, system, project management system here, where uh, each of these clusters was anchored by either an NGO or an agricultural university or a KVK or uh, maybe a private uh, extension uh, service providing agent. So uh, they were actually the project implementing partners residing right at the village. Next please. 
So this is in brief how, how I mean this is the diagram that shows you. The knowledge share centers where essentially each knowledge share center was also having what are called as knowledge utilization group, information and knowledge utilization group which was actually trying to organize the community to come to the, uh, the, the kiosks and then make use of this content that was provided there. So I will just go uh, how the content was prepared and all those in the next few slides, next please. And this is the kind of buildings uh, which house these uh, uh, kiosks, next one please. Uh, this is the kind of content, you know content also we, we generated content based on the major crops of that region and this content was also deployed both in voice as well as text formats. So local Telugu voice voiceover formats were there and uh, and in, in places where uh, there was some difficulty particularly for the internet connectivity, we even used the blackboards like the one you see there. Next please. And, uh, and a typical uh, ICT infrastructure in each of these villages considered of a touch screen kiosk an IVRS system and uh, a display announcement package that what you see in this picture here where we had a video library where farmers were encouraged to come and then have a you know in a group they, they were screened a film on say maybe a poultry farming or on a vermicomposting or azolla preparation uh, and this was this content was simply picked up off the shelf like we didn't really invest much of our time and energy in, in delivering in, in preparing these contents. Much of this was actually picked up from agriculture universities and uh, even Annadatta uh, kind of uh, programs and other places. Next please. And this is how uh, you know a typical uh, um, kiosk could be accessed by the, uh, by the people. Like we had crop diagnostic kits, then crop management timetable, soil and weather information, NRM information, livestock information and things like that. Next please. And uh, this is, uh, you know, certain recognition that we got uh, uh, from uh, various, uh, you know, people who recognized our efforts. Next, please. Uh, next one. I have already discussed this. Then interactive voice response system is also like, uh, you know, uh, we had a toll-free number where for farmers were able to contact us. Next, please. And some data, uh, probably it's not that important at this moment for this presentation. Next, please. Uh, next again, yeah and again we also uh, did some experiments with uh, delivering messages in handheld devices uh, which also got some very good response, next. And uh, using the impact you know we, we uh, in fact we tried to download certain Google maps and then locate where we had uh, uh, done our farm ponds and all. What we did in this particular cluster we prepared a network of nearly 30 farm ponds. You can probably appreciate the difference in the picture and the greenery there uh, before and after. This, this is after, a, after about 30 farm ponds were dug. In fact, what I am trying to say here is that uh, like we try to go one step beyond simply knowledge sharing and also how do we integrate these ICT tools in monitoring our project impact. Next please. Uh, we also did some work in wireless weather sensors where we try to give um, you know real time weather based information particularly in certain diseases which are very uh, weather sensitive in groundnut particularly in, uh, in uh, Anantapur as well as in Mahbubnagar district. Next please. Yeah and uh, this, this the usage again varied a lot and that I will come to the reasons why it happened like that. Next please. And uh, of course, uh, it was always preferred that farmers wanted to have information right on their handsets. Next, please. Both voice and uh, text messages were most preferred. Next, please. Next. Well, uh, in, with all these things, at the end of the project, we said, I mean, we we bid a grand farewell to this project, which was which was again a time-bound project in. Yeah, in, in, in 2012 March we completed the project and uh, these were some, some of the issues that kept plaguing even after the project is over. Like how do, how do we hand over these things, who will look after this, who will pay the power bills and then you know uh, who will be mon managing the kiosks and in spite of having a dedicated team right under the project who used to run from even for a simple UPS repair 
we used to have people running from one place to another place and we all know keeping all kinds of gadgets with us how difficult it is to find a service contractor to come and then do it on time and this is very very difficult when it is being done in remote places like the ones we worked next please well these still remain as the major constraints connectivity we really struggled hard and finally we found out that the data cards uh, of different companies you know for example somewhere idea is a better uh, network somewhere airtel has better network somewhere bsnl has net better network but in none of these places we had a better landline telephony where we could have accessed and had got, had a more stable uh, connectivity next please well uh, coming to the policies what i feel at this moment having experienced all these things over the past 5 years i feel that it's not enough if the we agricultural experts and certain people who are involved in and interested in agriculture development and interested in improving the service delivery uh, just beat our own drums and say that ict is very important i think we need to really look beyond this and unless certain concurrent policy changes occurs at larger uh, in the larger uh, you know interest of the farmers maybe you know farmers most important need is getting a revenue record in time and why are we not getting it unless all these things are done i think ict will still remain only a far cry from reaching the people you know farmers most important service knowledge uh, his need for knowledge probably is much lower in the ladder than his needs for maybe knowing how much price he gets or when he will how easy it will be for him to get a, get us an assistance in i uh, nhm scheme or uh, you know get his patta records or paying his electricity bill or whatever which is still still very very difficult for the farmer to do it unless at the governance level there is enough impetus for improving the services citizen services probably uh, it will be a it will be a very difficult thing and then realizing the full potential of icts as i said needs concurrent reforms dot telling of citizen services is a must then icts in extension broadening the outlook current paradigms look only at the knowledge sharing or knowledge transfer or technology transfer whatever you may call that being the primary function and we also need to take it beyond this monitoring evaluation standardization of processes maintenance of database and delivery of these things management and improving the accuracy of predictions and accreditations of uh, services involved in this sector and also icts for extension need to recognize the changing role of an extension changing role of extension extension is no longer simply transferring the knowledge it is doing much more than that and a massive need for capacity building of the extension professionals uh, in fact as very rightly said in the morning that our clients are not farmers directly i think it is too simplistic to say that we are we are doing all this ict only for the farmers there are so many other intermediaries first we may, we may have to address them and their capacities need to be developed only then probably uh, we will be doing a uh, human service in this area and uh, these are the thoughts that i thought i'll share with you thank you very much for this time thank you dilip for putting up all these uh, things and then inviting me thanks a lot